If being a part of the next innovation inside of rowing, indoor and outdoor sounds interesting to you, stay tuned because today I head off to Paris to meet up with Decathlon because we're working on a super, super secret just inside PDP Army only. Those of you that know, know. And if you don't know, check the description below for the link. We're working on an innovative product inside of the rowing world that isn't even finished yet and I need your help to design it because in this video, you're gonna check out the very first look at what the current prototype looks like. It's not even finished yet and I need your help to participate. I, I need to know what you think. Would you use it? Wouldn't you use it? What are your ideas? Help us make this product and off to Paris I go. <laughs> since we have a delay, let's just take a quick coaching timeout Beep. and let's go ahead and talk about something that may actually be relevant to your rowing. So many people ask about drag factor. It doesn't matter how many videos I make on the topic. Everybody wants to know what's the right drag factor for me to use. Well, let's just start with this. The end and the answer is it depends and it's different for everybody. Now let's backtrack from there with a really easy analogy that might help you understand what drag factor does. Think about it this way. When you take the damper setting all the way down to a one, what that does is it pinches off the air supply, which means that the flywheel can spin quickly, but you have to be fast to keep up with it and get the benefit from it. The equivalent to that would be like running on a flat track or maybe even downhill with a tailwind. You can go real fast, but you have to be able to keep up with the cadence, meaning your legs have to be able to run fast enough to be able to keep up with that. And if you look at some of the fastest sprinters in the world, they're very fit people. Now on the other side of the equation, if we take that damper setting all the way up to a 10, it's akin to running up a mountain. Now, what does that mean? Well, you have to be able to grind. You have, you're you gonna have a slower cadence and turnover of your legs, but there are some really amazing mountain climbing athletes, and that's just what they prefer, just like what a sprinter prefers. So the athletic differences are going to vary per person, and that's why there is really no right answer here, and why I like to use that analogy is because most of us know what running feels like. Most of us have probably done that at some point. So if you can think about it from that standpoint, it brings us back to the answer of it depends and there is no right answer. And by saying that, it means that you have the ability to choose whatever damper setting is right for you and you should experiment across the range. <laughs> Espresso comes in every room in Paris, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm here in Paris, I've got my feet on the ground, I had some fun with the World Rowing Indoor Championships, but now it's time for us to go check out what exactly is happening with decathlon. So I'm ready to pack up my bags, get on the road, I'm jumping on the metro, and we're gonna go meet with the decathlon team for the first time. <laughs> We have arrived. I'm here at the 2024, uh, the course we're using, where we're testing it, is actually the 2024 Olympic water sports course. So kayaking, canoeing, maybe sailing, I, I don't know, rowing. This is where it's all gonna happen. And so it's actually cool because we're seeing the Olympic course being built around us. There's just nonstop construction happening around here. And we have the ability to bring this these little prototype units down onto the water and we have just a flow of people coming through today who are going to be testing this thing for the first time. Not rowers, most of them aren't even indoor rowers, they're just coming from water sports. Many of them are stand-up paddle boarders because, you know, this thing, you can work with a stand-up paddle board and we're just throwing them in, trial by fire hose. How do you like it? What do you think? We're gonna, and then we just watch, we just put them on it, away they go. So we have somebody going right now and uh, this is our day to really test it. So I'm freezing out here. It's a very cold day, high winds, 
thankfully we have at least a little bit of sun and we're just gonna check out how this thing goes I'll check in throughout the day and we'll take some shots we'll see how this looks yeah I, I'm gonna give it a try and see what I think too So something that's really important to uh, note here is, and as many of you mentioned in the comments the last time when I announced the decathlon partnership, is that yes, these products do exist. We're not inventing something from scratch. What we're doing is attempting to find a more accessible way of making these things. And so while this isn't a new product, what we're doing right now and what you're seeing on camera are several different types of these products because we wanna figure out what is the best way to run this? Do people prefer going forwards or backwards? Do they like, their, you know, there are two ways you can make these. You can have a sliding seat or sliding feet and riggers. Which, ways, which way do they prefer? Do they prefer the sliding seat or the sliding feet rigger? So we're testing all these different products out here today. We have multiple prototypes and multiple things running around. So that's an important distinction here is this is just a learning environment and we're really trying to learn like how people respond best to a new type of, to rowing in general when they've never attempted it before. And for me, this is really fascinating and for you this will be as well because all of you guys pay attention to how you move on this machine, but what if we took somebody who had never done it and tried to get them rowing the first time with no instruction? So it's a really fascinating play out of how that works. Does it work? It's weird. The feathering and squaring is reversed. Not only are you rowing backwards, but now you have to feather backwards. That was confusing to me. That was probably the hardest part. Unless we just have the rigors getting backwards. Burn, I'm getting out. Yeah, yeah. Baby, you make me lose my mind. Maybe you wanna stay the night. Time goes fast. Your thoughts about this? Um, all right, so the oar locks are really high, which means that you're carrying your hands really high. So it's gonna force a looping handle instead of being able to carry the handles a little bit more naturally. Mm -hmm. And there was really no way for me to not be picking my hands up and carrying them up and over the top because of that how high that pitch was. Obviously we're just working with straps right now, but because it wasn't able to anchor, even a few strokes in and the whole system just shifted. I could feel every stroke that I was almost kind of driving the nose of the paddleboard down. So I was getting a lot of nose down and then back up on every stroke. I think a fixed oar makes a lot of sense for a non-rower. Mm -hmm. The thing that I liked more about this than first system that I yeah. tested was that in that system you were actually limited into how deep you could get into the catch. That's right. So I reached a point where I would literally just hit stops. Yeah. And that wasn't deep enough for me. Okay. So with this, you know, I have full clearance to be able to move out there. Mm -hmm. And what about the fact that you cannot put your oar too deep in the water? You can't bury the blade because you'd have to take your hands yeah up here in order for the blade to get deep enough in the water so i was i guess my comment of having to carry the hands too high is mm -hmm. the same comment as you can't necessarily get the blade in enough the, like the whole unit just didn't mm -hmm. feel like i was very connected to the board and so i was just kind of questioning the whole time if i was like pushing the system back mm -hmm. and forth on top of the board or as you know as we saw how it just shifted yep. on me I think my two biggest critiques are the height of the oar locks. Mm -hmm. That's just too high to carry your hands. Yeah. You have to shrug your shoulders to take that stroke, mm -hmm. which is not an effective way of moving. I mean, I'm also not used to rowing with spoon blades. <laughs> so those old fashioned blades are definitely- Old fashioned way. <laughs> no, they're definitely different for me. Yeah, but- Wow, 
That was a trip. Just a reminder, I had never seen any of those things before. I'd never even seen a picture of what this system looked like. So everything that you guys saw, that was my first time seeing it too. And uh, frankly, that was a lot of fun. Being able to row on the 2024 Olympic course, uh, that was really incredible in and of itself, even though it was freezing and got hailed on while we were there. But that was an experience in and of itself on those different machines. So here's the deal. If you haven't yet, make sure you go into the description below where there's a link for newcrew.decathlon.com because that's where all of the participation is happening. And it's just important to remember, this isn't gonna happen tomorrow. This is a, a basically a, an R&D project that you get to be a part of. So contributing your ideas, offering your thoughts, that's what's gonna make this all happen. And that's the fun part is there's really no pressure behind this. It's just a way to help bring something cool out for the future. So go jump in. I'm going to be in there. I'm always going to be answering questions, chatting. That's where you're going to see the newest information happen. And we just get to see where this thing goes for the future. If you enjoyed this video, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so that you become a member of the PDP army. And after that, go into the description below and click on newcrew.decathlon.com to sign up for basically the R&D group so you can offer up your ideas for the future. And a big thank you again to Decathlon for making all this happen.